uh, in 2007, I had the opportunity, actually the privilege and honor of being elected as chairman of the board of directors. And so I learned about this during the two years I've been in the board. I know the name Esca, Esca is so popular, Esca. And those are the things we will be discussing with you. I'm going to be using PowerPoint momentarily. ESCA is very big about unity and progress. We regard ourselves as an incubator of peace, as an incubator of unity. Most of the problem we have in Africa today, and even in South Sudan, is because unity is not translated into action. We are very sensitive about our diversity. We want to be inclusive. And therefore, it is kind of at the middle stage, whereby we want to export it home and see if it can work. But there are a lot of challenges. And uh, you know, the education, and I'm sure we can uh, overcome most of those challenges. Around 2000, 2001, a handful of Equatorial visionary leaders somewhere in the Midwest of the United States of America decided to form ESCA. Why they decided to do that is something we'll go over. I went through the document when I Get into the office, try to find and ask myself what inspired this great man to come up, come up with the idea of let's form something. We are in foreign land, let's be together. So that's the things that we are going to be looking at here. And somebody can help me with the next slide. Since I'm looking for political balance at home, Equatorians felt already feeling that. They are not being represented fairly. Number so two was integration challenge in the United States. You know, culture here is different from where we come from. Here, you don't send the kids to the school. Here, you are asked to change diaper, to cook. Those changes in general causes friction with the law of the land and results in so many families breaking apart. That was one of the things that, you know what, let's come together and try to educate our people and try to be the concept. If a family is having trouble, about to collapse, a lady is about to divorce her husband, we can't sell them the traditional way. That was one of the most personal factors. And of course, quest for development, for progress. Equatorians always want to be on top of it. They don't want to be the table. That's one of the things that motivated them. As you can see, the SPLN movement now, the peace we are having now, guess who started it? It's not started in 1983. Joseph Lago started it. So the SPLN is only the continuation of what was already initiated by Equatorians. <laughs> and now, preservation of identity. We don't want to dilute and dissolve into great American cultures. We are proud to be one and one of our children for the great Equatoria, we are for our special purpose. Kids and people who grow up in camps may not know what we are talking about. What is Equatoria? My children tell me, you this we have done is community mobilization. As you will see here to, uh, tomorrow night, not today, you don't see it. Whenever we get up for conference, the attendance is minimal. But come and see during the social session, the party is always the capacity. So you will see for yourself that we have succeeded to a great extent in mobilization. Not only here, someone mentioned earlier, among us is somebody or people from Canada. Also, the vice president told me some people were coming from Istanbul. Istanbul in Mediterranean, Far East. So mobilization is getting to that extent. Of course, we got incorporated. The first president already elaborated on that. Now we are recognized by the federal government of the 
United States of America as an entity. As a result, they granted us the federal tax exemption status. It's a great recognition. Uh, enhanced communication with the states, my colleague already covered. When we got to the office two years ago, there are six exam status so that we can write and raise money through grants and facilitate communication among states and with the head office that we have been able to do at least those two as the brothers. We have also succeeded in fundraising. I mean, you would not host an event in five-star hotel like this if you are not a good fundraiser. That speaks to us. Uh, identification of community needs and issues. In 2007, this young lady, she organized for the first time the first Ecuadorian Women Conference. And during that conference, they identified community needs. One of which was what they call in this country um, domestic violence. Here, if you just slap your wife or tell you late after midnight, it's a big deal, by the way. Even if you spam your kid, it's a big deal. They kick you out of the house and leave the woman in the house. You cannot approach her anymore. So those are kind of things that impact our community in a negative way. And see, say light on it. Now, the next step is for men, but she as a, as a woman, she has done her part. She said, there is a problem. You guys do something about it. And the other thing was to be realized is, okay, peace is returned to our motherland. What are we doing? What is our contribution in reconstructing the Equatorial that we might talk about? We identify that as one of the needs that we need to do something about. Uh, finally, the people we are having here, very high level delegation. For a governor of a country to come all the way across the ocean, for Secretary General of National Legislative and other dignitaries, as my colleague mentioned, to leave their family and children to travel 24 hours in air. What you call that a great recognition? A sacrifice? Those are the progress we have made thus far. We go to the next one. However, challenge remains. Of course, with that challenge, it will not be a business. It has, there must be challenge that will mess up your competence if you overcome them. And so, one of the challenges we have is this ambiguity in the purpose and scope of work of Esther. We are being pushed so much towards political arena, do something about politics. But we also have social needs, as I have just explained, that we need to address. So we are like, what is what? We cannot use non-profit status to do politics. However, Seven says, there's a way we can craft, we can go around it. 